morning. Uh, as he said, my name is David Liao. Uh, I'm an eye doctor here uh, at Retina Vitreous Medical Associates Group, and uh, we have an office right here across the street from Good Sam. And today I'd like to talk to you specifically about diabetes and what the problems it can cause in the eye. Uh, not only will we do that, we'll go through what you might expect in a visit to the eye doctor, what types of uh, problems it can cause in the eye, specifically diabetic retinopathy, and what type of treatments are available if you are happen to be diagnosed with diabetic retinopathy. Okay, so what is diabetes in general? Uh, many of you are here today and you're very active in the uh, treatment of your disease. So in general, as you know, diabetes is, is a chronic disease and it involves high blood sugars, chronic high blood sugars. Um, and as Victor said, this is a growing problem. Prevalence is becoming more and more as time goes on. Over 20 million Americans uh, will have diabetes and additional 40 million more are at risk. For example, they may have a pre-diabetes state with impaired uh, glucose tolerance with high blood sugars. So what causes diabetes? Um, many folks uh, may be on insulin, and as you know, insulin is an integral part of diabetes. Insulin is a hormone that is produced in our body, an organ uh, known as the pancreas, and it is produced in response to high blood sugars. For example, when we eat a meal that's high in sugar, sweets, candy, cake, soda, the blood sugars in our uh, body will rise as the, blood is as the sugar is taken into our bodies. And our natural response to that is to have insulin, which pushes the glucose into our tissues where it can be used. And in diabetes, that mechanism, something's wrong with that. Uh, in some people, um, the body doesn't produce enough insulin. So as the sugar goes into our bodies, there isn't enough insulin to make our bodies use it properly, and that results in high blood sugars. In other folks, there may be enough insulin, but the body is actually resistant to the insulin. The insulin's not doing what it's supposed to do, and therefore the blood sugar rem remains high as well. In some people, it's a combination of both, little insulin and high resistance to insulin. So are there different types of diabetes? Yes, there are. Uh, there are two types, um, and this is type 1 and type 2 you may have heard of. Type 1 diabetes can occur at any age. Uh, however, it's mostly seen in younger folks, children, teenagers, young adults. And in this type of disease, the body actually makes little or no insulin. And, and these folks, you may know of folks who are teenagers or young adults that have to take insulin injections every day, and that's because their body isn't making enough insulin. The exact cause of the, this type of diabetes isn't really known. It may have something to do with the uh, body uh, causing uh, damage to the pancreas, those cells that produce the insulin. So that's one of those theories. The second type of diabetes, diabetes type 2, that is actually the most chronic uh, or the most common form of diabetes. And, and most folks in this room probably have type 2 diabetes if you have the uh, disease. It often occurs most often in adulthood. And uh, however, it's being diagnosed younger and younger um, as our um, population uh, gets more obese, as uh, weight gain is a problem because that causes more insulin resistance. So we may see it in younger and younger folks, even in children's nowadays. Um, now, many people, in fact, with type 2 diabetes don't know they have it because uh, the body just insidious, it's an insidious onset. Your body just gets less and less um, responsive to the insulin and your blood sugars creep up. And then by the time you've gone to the phys physician and they diagnose it, they may in fact, you may in fact ha have had it for a couple of years before that. Okay, so let's get to the point of the talk today is how can diabetes affect the eye? Um, let's, let's talk about the eye in general. Uh, if you think about the eye, I usually like to think about it like a camera, okay? It's taking pictures so you can see. Um, the front part of the eye, there's a lens, and that's just like the lens in the camera. It helps to focus the light into the eye so that it can be projected onto the film. And the lens is where you get cataracts. A cataract is simply a clouding of the lens so the light doesn't pass through as easily. And you may know um, older folks, very common to have cataract surgery, where they take out the lens and replace it with a clear plastic lens so you can see better. All right, uh, let's move to the back of the eye. In the back of the eye, is, uh, there's a film called the retina. It's just like the film in the camera. And it's a very thin layer of nerve tissue that lines the back of the eye. And that film tissue converts the light signals into images which you can see. And if you can uh, 
you know, think of the camera having not so good film. If diabetes causes diabetic retinopathy, which is damage to that film, the images that you're going to see and the camera that, that the camera produces aren't going to be that good. Uh, so folks with diabetes uh, can get damage to the retina, which is diabetic retinopathy. They tend to get cataracts at an early age. Sometimes it also predisposes folks to glaucoma, which is another type of disease where pressures in the eye tend to be high because the eye is filled with fluid. The, the pressure in the high, eye is high, and that can cause damage to the nerve in the back of the eye and also cause loss of vision. But we're going to talk about diabetic retinopathy today, how diabetes damages the, that film in the back of our camera. All right, so what is diabetic retinopathy? Remember that the retina is the light-sensitive film in the back of the eye that allows for vision. And diabetes can damage this. Uh, diabetes, what it does is it causes damage to blood vessels. Blood vessels in your brain, in your heart, in your kidney, as some of the other doctors will talk about. But we've got blood vessels in our eye, too, that need to work, uh, supply the eye with blood and oxygen for it to function properly. And uh, this picture here on your left shows a normal on the top there, shows what you'd normally see. And the bottom picture shows what you might see if you had a lot of problems with diabetes. There can be blind spots, for instance, because of swelling in the retina. Uh, things can look blurry and out of focus. Also, there can be sometimes be a lot of floaters if there's blood in the eye. And sometimes the peripheral vision can damage, too, if there's detachment of the retina. And as Victor mentioned earlier, diabetes is an actually a leading cause of new case of, of blindness in working age Americans. Um, so it's not folks that are, you know, um, in their later years. It occurs actually mo very commonly in folks that are working, have families, and this not only causes problems with the health, but also a significant impact on uh, your working productivity. So that's why it's very important disease to, to keep, keep an eye on. All right. So how does diabetic retinopathy occur? Uh, as we said, the, the retina is a light-sensitive film in the back of the eye that needs blood vessels and good blood vessels uh, to, uh, to function well. So on your left there, you can see a picture of the retina, okay? And here, this white spot here in the center is, um, there you go. This white spot here in the center, that's the optic nerve. Everybody has that, that that goes back to the brain. And then these blood vessels come out from there and nourish the retina. Here in the center of the retina, that's called the macula, and that's the center part of our vision, the part of our retina that we use to see really well, crisp, fine detail, used for reading, uh, watching TV, that doing fine needlework, that type of thing. In some people with diabetic retinopathy, the blood vessels can swell and leak fluid. Uh, this is what we call non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And this picture is actually a picture of what you could see in non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. See these red spots here? Uh, these are little spots of bleeding in the retina. And uh, what happens is the vessels get damaged and some blood can leak out. Um, these yellow spots here are actually spots of cholesterol. So the, some of the cholesterol can leak out and be deposited in the retina. And this is not what we want. We want all the, you know, the things that are in the blood to stay in the blood vessels. And these um, deposits of cholesterol in blood can actually lead to decreased vision. Now, that's non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. There's another form which is more serious, and we call that proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and that's shown here on your right. And in other folks, you get abnormal blood vessels growth. And here, it's pr a little difficult to see, but what happens is as the retina is damaged, the retina knows it's not getting enough oxygen, and so it sends out signals um, to, for the body to make new blood vessels. And you might think that's good because you're getting new, new blood vessels in there, but those are actually bad because those blood vessels are abnormal and they can break and bleed and pull on your retina and, and, and cause lots of problems. So here we see some abnormal blood vessel growth right on the nerve here, and, and that's a problem. That's what we call proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So two forms, pro non-proliferative and proliferative. And there are different stages of diabetic retinopathy. As you can imagine, the longer you've had the disease, uh, the worse it can get, okay? So the early form is called non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and the first stage is mild. 
you may not no notice any symptoms at all, actually. Uh, and when the doctor looks in, he can see what's called microaneurysms. And these are just small little outpouchings of the vessels. And those uh, signify that there have actually been so, some damage to the blood vessels there. Okay? But again, mostly mild, you may not notice any symptoms. Then it progresses to what we call a moderate uh, disease, okay? And then in that disease, in addition to the damage to the blood vessels, some of them start to get blocked and the blood isn't flowing very well in there and the, the, the retina is being deprived of oxygen and, and that's where we're starting to see more um, sickness in the eye. Then it progresses to severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. As the blockage gets more and more, the retina knows it's not getting enough oxygen, it's not working very well, and then it starts to send out these signals that oh, I need some new blood vessels here, okay? And once that gets to a point, you start growing new blood vessels, and that's where we get to the proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And that's much more severe, it can cause much more severe loss of vision, bleeding in the eye, detachment of the retina worse problems, okay? All right. Now, if you have been to the eye doctor before, you've had a friend that goes to, went to the doctor and they've, for instance, been told that they have swelling in the eye from diabetes, that's what we call edema. Just like your feet have edema sometimes, if they swell up, you can have the same thing in the retina, okay? And recall the retina is just like the film in the camera. If it's swollen, it doesn't work very well, okay? And this is just a picture of what your eye doctor can see if you have diabetic macular edema. On the top here, this is just a cross section of your retina, okay? This is just like the back of the eye just laid off on its side, okay? And this red line here, that's the back of the eye, and this green stuff here, that's the retina, okay? And you don't need to pay attention to what it looks like. It just This is how usually thick it is. And here's a little dip in the middle. Everybody has that. That's what a normal retina is supposed to look like, OK? In the bottom here, here's a, a picture of somebody who has diabetic macular edema, some swelling in the retina, OK? So this is the back of the eye, just like up here. But if you compare this thickness to up here, you can see this is, that's fatter, that's taller, right? And then you can also see, instead of this nice dip going down, it actually goes up instead. All right, so that's actually the retina sw swelling, and we call that diabetic macular edema. And like I said, if you can imagine that, that your retina is swollen, the film in your camera is swollen, it's not going to produce very good images, so your doctor has to treat that to try to get that gone away so you can see a little bit better. All right, so um, say I've been diagnosed with diabetes or someone you know has been diagnosed for diabetes. Am I at risk? Are they at risk? Um, in type 1 diabetes, after about five years, 25% of people will have retinopathy, and they may not notice it. After 10 years, it increases up to 60% of people can have retinopathy, so that's almost two-thirds. Um, in type 2 diabetes, after five years, it can vary depending on how bad the diabetes is. Anywhere from 24 to actually 40% can have retinopathy. And after 19 years, anywhere from 50 to even 84% can have retinopathy. And it's important um, to know this because retinopathy can be present even if you don't have any symptoms. It might not have gotten severe yet to affect the center of your vision, but it could be brewing, and then when you go, by the time you go see your eye doctor, it may have already caused damage. So you want to stop that or um, you know, prevent that before it gets to a severe stage. So should I get my eyes checked? And the answer is yes, <laughs> okay? Um, actually, the American Academy of Ophthalmology has produced guidelines. And for folks that have di one diabetes, they recommend that after you've gotten diagnosed, maybe about three to five years after that, you should get an eye exam, okay? And then you should get one yearly as well, all right? For folks with type 2 diabetes, remember I said sometimes you've had this for a few years before you've been even diagnosed. So in fact, the Academy recommends that at the time you get diagnosed, you should go to your eye doctor because you may have already had it for a couple years. And every three months, yes. And as the lady said up here, she goes every three months because sometimes if you've had changes in the eye already, your doctor may need to see you more frequently to make sure it's not getting worse or make sure you're not uh, requiring some treatment, okay? All right. So what should I, let's, let's switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about what you should expect when you go see the eye doctor, okay? A lot of people, me included, I go get their glasses every year. Um, you know, that's a little bit different. That's their checking to make sure you don't need new lenses or something. But when you go have a diabetic eye exam, it's a little different. It's a little bit more in-depth, 
okay? So usually your primary care doctor, your internist will refer you to your eye doctor, okay? And what you can expect is your eyes are gonna be dilated. They put those drops in there that make your pupils real big and you're sensitive to light, okay? That way the doctor can look inside your eye and get a good view at your whole retina and see if there's any changes to the blood vessels that are going on there. So that's real important. If you don't have that your eyes dilated, you know, your pupil, the color part of your eye is real small. So it's trying to, look, it's like looking through a, a pinhole and you can't really see much through that. So you, you should get a dilated exam every year if you have diabetes. And uh, there may be special tests that are done, and we're going to talk about that later, okay? And usually the first visit is going to take about an hour or two because you've got to get your eyes dilated and maybe some uh, special tests, okay? Uh, let's talk about some of those uh, tests, okay? Now, the first thing, uh, your doctor is going to look at your eyes with a machine called a slit lamp, okay? And it's just, a, it's just actually a microscope that the doctor uses, and he's sitting on one side over here, and it's, it magnifies things, and there's a beam of light, and then what you do is you just sit with your head in a headrest, doesn't hurt or anything, and he looks in your eye with the light. And it's just a special microscope and it blows uh, images up really big so he can look for any damage of diabetes. So that's called the slit lamp exam. You'll have that at every eye exam. Okay. Sometimes we take photos of the back of the eye, okay? And this is just like taking a photo of your, of your portrait, you know, in, your, in the photo studio. This is Hector, he works at our office, he's taking a photo here. And uh, this is usually done to, um, you know, document the severity of it, any diabetic retinal changes. So you may have fundus photos, those are really quick and easy. Now the other thing is what we call a fluorescein angiogram. Now remember, diabetes causes damage to the blood vessels and abnormal blood flow in the back of the eye. So what we want to do is we want to assess, look at the blood flow in the back of your eye. And how we do that is we inject a yellow dye. It's, it's not iodine or anything like that. It's a yellow synthetic dye. We inject that into your hand or your arm. Then it goes up through your circulation, travels up into your eye. And then as it goes in your eye, we take a lot of pictures. And that's how we can see how good or bad the blood flow is in your eye, okay? And this is just a picture of what you might see and what you might see in the doctor's office. So this is the picture of the back of your eye, okay? This is the nerve here, and these are blood vessels coming out, and the photo is black and white, okay? Now the dye is actually going into the blood vessels here, and you can see these blood vessels, see these are white? That's because it's got the dye in them, okay? Um, these blood vessels are dark, but later on they'll start filling with dye. And that's one way that your doctor can assess the blood flow in your eye, okay? The dye is yellow, so um, after the uh, injection you may notice that your skin or your urine is a little bit yellow colored for a day or two. That's it. Um, the uh, procedure is very painless. Um, pretty much the only pain is just a needle stick, okay? And um, that's pretty much it. So that's one other test called fluorescein angiography. And that allows your doctor to check if there's any abnormal blood flow. Okay, a cool new other technique that we've been using for the past few years is called optical coherence tomography. Now you might uh, recall like the CT scan is called, um, is called computed tomography. This is optical coherence tomography. And it's not radiation or anything. What it is is just a little bar of light that you look at. And here this patient is looking into the machine. It, it takes a few minutes. They shine a little bar of light. And it actually gives us an optical cross-section of your retina. And what that does is it'll take your retina kind of and make a picture of it cut in half and we can see just like that other picture if it's swollen or not. So this is a normal retina. This is the back of the eye here. This is the retina on top and it's got different layers in it and it has this nice little dip down. You know, if it were swollen, you could see like in that other picture that it's, there's that little dip is gone and it's real thick and, and heaped up. Okay, so that's called optical coherence tomography, and that really helps us see if there's any tiny little bits of swelling that you can't see just by um, looking at the eye through a regular exam. Okay, so those are kind of what you might expect to see at your diabetic eye exams, different tests. So what treatments are available? Um, so definitely the, the best preventative treatment is uh, strict control of the blood sugars. And you can definitely work with your uh, internist or endocrinologist to do this. Uh, the better the blood sugars are controlled, um, the less likely you are to get, to get diabetic retinopathy or complications from diabetes in your feet or in your heart, okay? And even if you have damage already, hopefully controlling your blood sugars can actually prevent further damage, okay? So can't stress that enough. Definitely work with your primary care doctors and get that blood sugar under control. 
in the event that you already have retinopathy, what can be done, okay? Um, sometimes people have swelling in their retina, sometimes they have new blood vessels in the retina. So there are different types of treatments. One of the old types of treatments, and we still use today, is laser, okay? Another thing we use is injections of medicine into the eye to help the swelling or help the new blood vessels. And finally, if th things are um, you know, pretty advanced, we can do surgery to try to um, take off some of the scar tissue or clear ble bleeding that's occurred in the eye. Okay, so let's talk about laser first, okay? Uh, you hear laser advertised on the radio, LASIK to help your, your vision to get you to 2020. That's a different kind of laser, okay? This is laser uh, because of leaky blood vessels in your eye. So remember, diabetes will cause these leaky blood vessels. They can leak blood, they can leak cholesterol into your eye and your, into your retina and cause it not to work very well. So what your doctor may want to do is take a laser and just kind of, you can think of it as cauterizing those leaky blood vessels, okay? And sometimes that can stop the swelling from getting worse, okay? And basically your doctor will, will use a laser, it's a painless procedure, and he'll just put a lens on your eye and it takes about five or 10 minutes and you'll see these little flashes of light and he'll seal those little blood vessels. The treatment may need to be, be repeated every few months or so, depending on how bad the diabetes is. But the laser is not exactly to improve your vision, although it can, but it's to prevent further vision loss, okay? So that's laser if you have swelling, all right? There's a different type of laser that we do if you have new blood vessels growing, all right? So the new blood vessels are growing in response to your retina being deprived of oxygen. That retina is starved for oxygen. It's making these growth factors that say, I need more oxygen, all right? And the, one of the ways to stop that is actually to laser that sick retina. We actually put burns in there so that it stops producing these, these bad chemicals that are causing the growth of blood vessels, all right? And here's a picture of a doctor administering that. You just sit at, it's an outpatient procedure. You just sit at a little, a slit lamp machine like that, just a little uh, desk, and he puts a lens on your eye. The procedure may take about 10 or 15 minutes, and they put a lot of laser spots in the eye, and it really shouldn't hurt, okay, um, to uh, actually stop those uh, bad chemicals from being produced. And here's a picture of someone that's had laser. Okay, this is the nerve, all right, this is the blood vessels come out. We never want to shoot laser in the center, okay, because that would cause you to lose vision. But we shoot it off on the side where that sick retina is and see these little white spots? Those are the little laser burns, okay? All right, so that's laser for new blood vessels, pro for proliferative diabetic disease. Okay, so that's laser. Let's talk about injections now, okay? Injections, they sound scary, but they're actually pretty quick and pretty painless, okay? Um, Recall that um, sometimes you have swelling or new growth of, di of blood vessels, and they're due to these growth factors, these abnormal growth factors that are being produced by your um, retina that is starved for oxygen. The injections we do into the eye actually clean up those growth factors. They bind them up so that they can't cause these bad problems that go in the eye, okay? And the in eye is actually, uh, the injection actually goes right into the eye, all right? It goes in the white part of the eye, the white part, okay? And you're well anesthetized for the procedure. The medicine goes into the back cavity of the eye, see the medicine there, and it can hopefully dry up those leaky blood vessels, okay? Like I said, they're in the office. Uh, they're done under local anesthesia, okay? And there's minimal pain or discomfort. Uh, most people say the eye feels a little red or scratchy afterwards, okay? Uh, that, that goes away in a couple of days, or they see some floaters that also goes away in a couple of days, okay? And usually your eye drops, uh, your doctor will just give you some eye drops to use after the injection so that you don't get an infection, okay? And just like the laser, the um, injections can be repeated every once in a while to prevent the diabetes from getting worse. Okay, so we talked about laser, we talked about injections. Now the last resort we can do is do surgery, okay? Sometimes folks with really advanced disease, those abnormal new blood vessels, they break and they bleed, they give you an eye full of blood. Okay, and as you can imagine, if your eyes full of blood, you're not going to see very well. So sometimes we have to go in there and actually clean that out, all right? Uh, and sometimes also those diabetic blood vessels can cause scar tissue on the retina, and we need to go in there and remove that scar tissue, okay? 
So this is, uh, this is actually a picture of Willie. He works over here at Good Sam. He does uh, most of our surgery with us and one of our other surgeons. And this is kind of a picture of what you could expect uh, with surgery, okay? The surgery is called a vitrectomy, okay, because we're going inside the eye and removing the vitreous gel. And actually, we go through the white part of the eye, okay? And these are little teeny tiny instruments the size of a needle. We make a little incision on the white of the eye. We go inside the eye and remove all that gel that's in there. You don't need the gel for anything. It's just trapped. Sometimes it traps blood in there. We move, remove all the blood, okay? And then sometimes we can put laser in there. We can uh, peel away any scar tissue, and that can actually help to help you see quite a bit better, okay? Um, we do a lot of the surgery here at Good Samaritan right across the street. Uh, it's an outpatient procedure, so you go in the same day, you will go home the same day. It's done under local anesthesia, which we just give you a nerve block around the eye. So you'll be awake during the surgery, however, you shouldn't feel any pain. You may feel some pressure and you'll be able to hear people talking and everything. And then basically you just wear a patch home that same day, and after that you come back to the office the next day where you start using eye drops and the eye begins to heal over the next period of a few months. Now the last thing, uh, there are actually many new treatments coming out from, uh, for diabetes. There are new drugs that are, are being developed. Uh, the injections that we do, they're actually um, coming out with medicines that are maybe actually stronger and may last longer, okay? Um, we're actually fortunate to have a very large uh, clinical trials department, and we're actually involved in a couple clinical trials with diabetes, uh, one with a, a medicine called Lucentis and another uh, medicine called VEGF trap. And these are actually medicines that help bind up those bad growth factors in, in the eyes of folks with diabetes. And uh, they, the results have actually been quite encouraging. Um, it helps the swelling. Uh, qu if you have swelling in your eye from diabetes, it helps the swelling quite substantially. So uh, that's another uh, option we have. And there will probably be other options coming down the line uh, with the clinical trials. So um, we can sign you up for that if, or, or talk to you about that if you're interested as well. Okay. So in summary, uh, diabetes is a disease that is increasing in prevalence. Uh, millions of Americans will be affected now and in the future. Uh, diabetes is a significant cause of vision loss, especially in folks that are in their prime years, their, their working years, so it causes a lot of, of, of problems. Um, however, working together, coming to events like this um, with patients and physicians, we can control the disease and prevent diabetic complications. Um, so here's some pictures of the folks at our office, um, and uh, thank you for your attention. If anybody has any questions, huh? oh yes, uh, yeah, we've got. Uh, if um, folks are there, I believe in in the uh, information. We've got um, some uh, cards and pamphlets and brochures. Yeah. Mm -hmm.